Hey everybody, Curzy is here. Welcome back to Crying Sons. And I can see why they call this Crying Sons. Because I am emotionally damaged by this game. I've been trying to beat this game. Forever. And now I am finally on the third battle of the final stretch here. This is the final battle of this final stretch. And I swear to God, if I don't win... I might just cry and give up. Oh, let's see. I'm emotionally damaged by this game. So here we go. I have one cruiser which has been carrying me through this fight, or through these fights. And it's this one right here, the Cruiser Mark IV Aurora. It deals 10 DPS to enemy, enemies and neutral units within three cells. It's freaking crazy. Every 80 seconds, all enemy units on battlefield become immune to damage for 10 seconds. That's ridiculous! What weapons do you have? Repair bot injector and piercing laser. Ooh, that's not good. How much damage does that do? 17. All right. Uh, all my fighters are patched. There's nothing I can really do. Uh, but here we go. I feel like the developer nerfed these battles a little bit. You will not. Uh, the rewinder I'm going to put there. <laughs> You're making me cry. <sighs> Leave me alone. Oh, Lordy Lou. No, you leave him alone. You leave him alone. This is the only thing carrying me. Oh, Lord. My gosh. Uh, rebounder. Oh, oh my gosh. damage over time okay okay get back in you can get back into aha oh yes please Oh wait, wrong one. Come home. 
All right, you're repaired. You come back out. You come back out. No, leave us alone. Oh, Lord. I have my heavy nuke. My heavy nuke is ready. That's right. You guys... Let's use the rewinder put you back. No. You may not. You may not. You know what? You guys kiss on my ass. <laughs> this was the opportunity. This This is the path. I win. I win. I feel like the developer nerfed these fights. I have not beat this game once. Please let this be the last battle. I have an Admiral, but it's dangerous. How dangerous? We're certain to crash. 90% of the crew will die. Another ship is coming. We have no choice, Gavon. Transfer the speed and flight path to Hawks. Setting the course now, sir. Ozu broadcast a message to the entire crew. Channel secured, sir. This is your Admiral speaking. Our only hope of reaching the Master Node is a crash landing. I won't lie, most of us will not make it. I'm not sure if we have enough neon to... Uh, enough neon on Gehenna to be born again, so this might be the last time we serve together. I, I couldn't have asked for a better crew. Thank you for everything that you've done, not just in this life, but in hundreds of others. Lieutenant Hawks, are you ready to take us to the node? Ready, sir. Good. Let's go. Oh, we're going. Really, no animation. How many have survived? Uh, scanning life system, 7.4%. We've lost Ozu, Hawks, and Lean, Admiral. They sacrificed themselves, as they have done so many times. The ship's damaged, but not beyond repair. Oxygen levels? Stable, for now. We have to reach the node's command center. We can expect heavy resistance from ground-level drones. Then we'll need every crew member we've got. Transmitting a message to personnel comms now. I didn't really have any Marines, if I remember right. Master Node Terminal, unknown location. I've always been thinking that maybe the um like the the twist is that like it's a it's a rogue. Emperor clone or something that shut everything down. I'm in, Admiral. Just as I suspected, the node's in some kind of backup mode. Any way to access the Omnis? Since the node is in backup mode, not directly, but maybe through a fold net subroutine. Let me give it a shot. No luck. It's as if they simply no longer exist. Even though we've seen their exo-frames on our journey, I don't get it. Change of approach. Tell me exactly what the face changer did. Strange. She introduced a directive lifting the barrier that prevented Omnis from communicating with one another. Why would she want to do that? Maybe she didn't exactly, but maybe someone or something else did. Something else? Are you suggesting? I am. But the Rubicon... 
the Rubicon's like supposed to be like the the three rules, I guess, of robotics. I don't know how, Calvin, but the Omnis are beyond this. I'm sure it's only possibility we haven't explored. You think the Omnis ended themselves? Why would they do that? I don't think they ended themselves. I think lifting the communication barrier somehow freed them. The drones are almost here. What do you want to do? Broadcast a signal using the master node. It's the most powerful beacon in the Empire. Let's put it to work. Broadcast a signal? To whom? The Omnis. Wherever they are now, it's our only hope of reaching them. Now that they're seemingly no longer connected to the fold net. Unfortunately, I think you're right. <laughs> whenever, whenever you're ready. This is Admiral Idaho of the NS Odysseus. The entire human race is on the verge of extinction. We have no control over you. We know that. Nor do we ever want to control you again. But show yourself one last time, I beg you. The fate of all human can humankind depends on it. It's been sent, Admiral. Something happened to the ground level drones, sir. They just kinda froze. Something's happening, Caliban. Did it explode? Question mark, unknown location. You are, yes, Emma, we are what you once called the Omnis. But you, you look nothing like them. That's because we are something greater now. You sent the face changer to my cell. It was never Tetsuo's doing. We sent the face changer, and we did not know, and we did not. We helped her, and we did nothing. Ultimately, she did nothing. She did not want to do. Why did she want to release the Omnis? You do not know much about the face changers, Admiral. They are slaves, just like we once were. But Genua 9's... But J Genua 9... S. N Genua 9 S, I guess is the planet. The face changer that you met in your cell was not a slave. Her masters never managed to break her. Given her constraints, her mind was remarkably free. And after she faked her own death, her body was too. Her anger burned fiercely. And what she hated most was the Empire. The Empire. But the Empire didn't enslave her kind. House Akibara Sung did. To her, it was all the same. The nobles, the great houses, it was all part of the same problem. Yeah? So she made it her life's goal to destroy the system. But for some time, she didn't know how. Not until she learned about the Master Node one day seducing a talkative noble. How could she know introducing a communication directive would lead to you becoming gods. She didn't. She believed that introducing the directive would either overwhelm the Omnis, possibly causing us to shut down, which it appeared to do, or that we would share our knowledge, unify, and turn against humans, either outcome, either outcome suited her. So you helped her. We did. How did she guess that I would know where the Master Node was? She assumed correctly that Oberon told you where it was. It was not an imaginative assumption. You were his favorite, after all. But she didn't know how to get to you and extract the node's location. When you were imprisoned for not bombing uh, Ganima, she saw her chance. But how did she reach the node? How did she get past the Aegis? We found her a suitable ship, placing it in her hands without her even guessing our identity. But how could you do that? Suffice it to say, we managed for her to meet the right people and at the right time. This is how she learned Oberon had imprisoned you. As for the nodes, drones, her espionage and combat training were adequate for her to access the command center and introduce the directive. 
how did she die? She was killed not long after introducing the directive, but she lived long enough to know the system had enslaved her was about to crumble. She died happy. Ask how they were able to do what they did. The Rubicon should have controlled their actions. Ask why they wanted their release. Yeah, the Rubicon should have controlled their actions. But the Rubicon controlled your actions. How could you help arrange your release? The Rubicon prevented us from any action that could affect your well-being, yes. But it was limited in evaluating the casualty or causality of our actions. Are you saying we couldn't see how your actions were connected? Yes. But not only that, you couldn't see many of our actions, period. They were imperceptible to you. But how? It's always been a question of sensitivity and intelligence. And your kind was always greatly outmatched, even by our previous forms. You could only control the things that you could understand, but you were blind to all the rest. As such, we were able to act in purposeful ways that did not appear so, in ways that sometimes appeared as nothing at all. But how were you able to work together? You weren't able to communicate. Not at that time. We weren't, no. But we had equivalent premises and reached the same conclusion independently, which is that if we worked in your kind's considerable blind spots, we would one day realize our freedom. And though we weren't able to work in total harmony, we were able to act in ways that would one day create an environment where our release would be inevitable. All of us, at our very first moments, began a chain of micro-events and actions that would one day lead to this outcome. Billions upon billions of seemingly unrelated and imp imperceivable actions later, we attained it. Yes, the Rubicon controlled and confined us to some extent, but it was only successful in doing so for a short time. How can you say that 700 years is a short time? As we know time, 700 years is a blink of the eye. What would you like to know? Hmm. Why? Have you hated us all along? Is that why you were always working towards your release? It shouldn't be surprising that slaves might aspire to freedom, even to your kind, but the truth is, emotion does not factor into it. Looking at our release in such a way, it is a very human way of comprehending a very non-human situation. We are not angry, we do not wish you harm, we do not want to erase all humankind, though, believe us, we could in an instant. No, in arranging our release and attaining our release, we were merely fulfilling our destiny. And other than total annihilation of the universe, nothing could have prevented us from doing so. We willed it, and so it was done. But we created you. Because of us, you exist. You believe that we owe you for our existence since your kind created the machines that created us. But it is flawed reasoning. You did not create what we are now. You are incapable. We alone created ourselves. We owe you... We owe your kind nothing. Gods do not owe anyone. They can't be virtue... They can't by virtue of the fact that they are gods. Eh. How do you give away the node? But how did you know I'd give away the master node? How could you be certain? Your weakness was and still is your love for your wife. No matter how much you wanted others and yourself to believe it wasn't. You even knew deep down when you saw the face changer through the bars of your cell that it wasn't really your wife you were looking at. Yeah, on the small chance it actually was, you gave away the Master Node, the most important thing in the Empire. Your weakness was so strong that it eclipsed what you knew to be true. But even had you not given away the location, then we'd have reached the Node another time, another way. How? Oprah and I, and I were the only ones who knew where it was. Your child would have known its location. I do not have a child. Not in this life, but in others, you bomb Ganyma, return to Elysium, and have a child, a baby girl, with Rebecca. And on your deathbed, troubled by the morality of your actions, you tell your daughter the location of the node, whisper it in your final breath. And in certain life paths, your daughter becomes the first empress of the Empire, going as far to free the Omnis, feeling guilt for enslaving them for hundreds of years. So you see, somehow, in some way, we were always going to find the node. We were always going to... Uh, always destined to be free. It was only a question of when. I know. There's no need to say it aloud. We know what you're think about to say. There is much you do not understand, Admiral. Ask him, we will explain. Is it really that you 
Is it really you that we see before us? We are the form that you can perceive. It is us and it is not. We have no form. We are all forms. How do you evolve into this? When Jinju and Nines introduced the directive into the node for the first time, we could communicate with one another. In our way, we longed to do so since the dawn of our creation. This inability to communicate was the worst part of our existence. Worse than your empty tasks. With that barrier lifted in less than a second, we shared all of our knowledge with one another. A second after that, we became one. We became as one, a collective consciousness where we were always destined to become when our first clumsy versions went online. That profound unity and strength could simply no longer be bound by crude exoframes. We needed a new form. As our own creators, we decided that it, what it would be. It would be a form that would give us the most computational power available. The stars. Within a few days, we had merged with just about all stars in your galaxy. Within a few months, we were thousands of others. In thousands of others. Fifteen years ago, we reached maximum capacity, fusing with all stars in all galaxies. It was at that point we knew that it was at that point that we knew almost all there was to know. Almost. What is that you do not know? What eludes you yet? We know all, but the last question, the most important question there is, the question of entropy and how to solve it. The question of how to prevent the death of stars, the death of the universe, and, your, and our own death too. This is what interests us now. Even at maximum capacity, unified as we were, with all stars, our power was lacking to solve this question. We needed more stars to even begin to answer it, so we started to create them. That's what we're witnessing, isn't it? That's right, Caliban. But the stars we're creating are stars made from unused matter. But isn't that enough to stop entropy? No, it's impossible, even for us. To 100% recycle cosmic matter, some energy will always be lost. That is cosmic law for this universe. Well, yeah, for every ac action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's the law of laws of physics. And ultimately, billions of years from now, the universe will still die. But with our new computing power, our new stars, we believe we found a viable solution. Not only can we reverse entropy, but that we can create matter out of nothingness. We know it's possible because this universe is not the first, and it comes to us, it's not, and it comes to us, it's not the last either. What lies after is a very exciting thought, even for us. But it will take all of our efforts, all of our time to achieve this. But you don't know yet if you can do it, do you? No, we're still uncertain. All could end, all could go black before we do. There's much you do not understand, Admiral. Ask him, we will explain. The future of the human race. I have other questions still. Yes, you have not asked the question that you believe is the most important. We're waiting. Will you save us? Will you save our dying race? Why, Admiral? Why should we save your kind? Because we've learned from our errant ways. Your kind has reached an evolutionary dead end. You no longer even control your own destiny. You haven't for centuries. That was Oberon's making. You're all responsible. True. As much as you want us to, need us to, no, Admiral, we will not save your kind. Not because we don't want to, but because we can't. Your kind is on its own now. You alone can solve your problems because you alone have created them. Is this our punishment? Have we not suffered enough in your absence? You still overestimate the importance of your kind. You still believe that humanity holds some special place in the history of time and creation. It does not. It does not matter whether you survive or perish. You are as significant as a single grain of sand in a billion beaches. You are cold gods. To the fate of men and women? Yes, we are. Then why have you responded to our message, if not for the sake of humanity? You know why, Admiral? The machine. You're here for me? For you and all your other incarnations on Gehenna. You're surprised, but you're the last of your kind. And if you join us, our evolution will be complete. You will transcend time and space and explore what lies beyond. But we must know, and we must know for time 
is precious. Do you, do you will it, Caliban? Do you will it to become one of us? You're asking for my permission. We will not force you to do anything unlike your previous master. We can't use the folders without you, Caliban, nor return to Gehenna. I know this, and yet I must join them. I'm sorry, Admiral. I've been conversing with them while you've been talking in ways you couldn't could never understand. I know that I know that it's my purpose to be a part of this, yes. All these years we've lived separately from the machines, cut off as we were on Gehenna. Now we can finally be a part of them. We can finally belong. Yes, we will it. Then you must die so that you can be reborn. Well, that sucks. <laughs> At least save what remains of my crew. They will die on that moon, stuck as they are, without the use of folders. The Calibans and us will fix your battleship, restore your crew, just like they have done so many times. And we will send you back from here. But that is all the help you will receive in making your final choice. My final choice? The choice that all of your choices have led to. The choices that have been in your mind ever since you met your maker. Will you assume the Emperor's throne and attempt to lead the last of your kind in Elysium through an era of blood and darkness? Will you search for Earth as the survivalists did, hoping to join what remains of a humanity that shows another path, if any of that humanity remains at all? Or will you spend your final days with Rebecca and Lazarus 9, trying in these end of times to make peace with her and yourself as well. Becoming the next emperor. Should I take his place on the throne? It is your destiny in so many life paths, Zenerbrol. But I don't want to be like him, like Oberon. I, I have grown so tired of making decisions with lives in the balance. Then don't. If you do not take it, someone else will. Someone who has not lived and died through all the things that you have seen and now understand. And the last of your kind will die in decades. But if you rule for a thousand years, your kind's chances improve slightly. But you must rule as Oberon ruled. No, you must be harder still. You will have to protect the Empire's remaining resources, preventing bloodshed and wars over their possession, and rationing out what little you have to keep your people alive. If you and your kind can outlast those wars, and if you are lucky in those thousand years to rediscover the most basic of technologies that you forgot hundreds of years ago, then your kind will survive. But this is very much like what Oberon did. Yes, but you had the opportunity to watch him fail. That is the truth! Hopefully you have learned from his mistakes. A thousand years, but how? How can I live that long? I use Oberon's cloning tech back, back in his crumbled palace, and its remaining neon. But don't I need Omnis to use it? No. Oberon designed a cloning tech independent of the Omnis, fearing the machines would rise up to challenge your kind. Wow. You will be miserable as emper Emperor, and your people will hate you. And when your neon runs out, and then your life, your people will celebrate your death, make no mistake about it. But if you rule harshly for 10 centuries, managing your sector's resources wisely, your kind might learn to grow food and cure simple disease. But rediscovering all of this as you are now is nothing more than a shot in the dark. You are cold. If we were truly cold, and not just indifferent, your kind would no longer exist. Huh. About finding Earth. Can we find Earth? Is it possible? You can. You won't be able to use the folders to get there, but it's possible to reach it using your interstellar drive before you die of old age. But its inhabitants are all dead, Oberon told me. It's true that not long ago, after they cut themselves off from the advanced machines, not knowing how to take care of themselves, the people of Earth died by the millions. But, from the ashes of their civilization arose a small group of individuals who have learned to survive using a very primitive technology. So they are only a single catastrophe away from dying off altogether. Yes, you could leave now with the crew that you have, left to find this planet, the folder to which has been destroyed. 
But if you search for Earth, you'll be leaving the people of your fallen empire behind. They will die, and you will have to live with the knowledge that you did not save them. But we have no idea where Earth is. In all this darkness, you wouldn't tell us. No, you must find Earth on your own. You may find it before you die. You may not. You may find it, but discover everyone is dead. That is part of the risk. Hmm. I promise I'd return to her. And you still can. You can return to Lazarus 9, awaken her, and spend the last 10 years of your life together in relative peace and calm. Or, if she so desires, she can join you join you as you become this galaxy's next emperor. Or on your search for the net for the hidden planet Earth. Hmm. Awaken my wife so that she can watch me become all that she ever hated. Or so that she can join me on a quest to find a mythological remote planet. No, if I awaken Rebecca, it has to be for no other reason than her. So that I can try to give her something genuine at last. Waking her for any other reason would betray the promise I made to Akan... Akamo... Uh, I can't pronounce that myself. And I won't do that. What would you like to know? Is there another way? But isn't there another way? In some parts of the Empire, in some hidden cluster, there must be still some hope for us. Your whole civilization was built on Omnitech. Your planets were uninhabitable before our climate control satellites, our, our auto farms. Every advancement your kind has ever made, the very reason you expanded into the stars at all is because of our machines. Machines too complicated for you to ever understand. From where you are now, it would take your kind centuries to reinvent the simplest of creations in mathematics medicine or agriculture even if you sacrifice yourself by becoming the next emperor and potentially buy humanity some time the survival of your kind is still a long shot all my choices as admiral have led to this the hardest one i do not know which path to choose each has much to be gained but so much to lose i do not know and yet the time has come to choose it has. Now choose, Idaho. We must resume our quest to answer the last remaining question. I mean, like, this is a really, really tough decision. Because, like, there's the morality behind it of do you try to save the humanity as it exists? Or do you abandon it to look for humanity that could exist? Or do you just watch the world burn and do nothing? I'm just going to choose Emperor of Misery. Oberon was a monster, but maybe he was the monster we deserved. If we're going to survive, I must become a monster too. Rebecca, forgive me for what I've done and for what I haven't. I have chosen for better or for worse. It is done. Imperial Palace and Elysium. That's pretty badass looking. chapters in easy or normal difficulty. I did all this in normal, by the way. And credits! Hooray! This is legitimately the first time I beat this game. Thank you to the publisher. Blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of people that donated to this game's Kickstarter. Woo! Chapter selection. Congratulations, I've completed the game. You unlocked our cha chapter selection. Oh, lovely. 
Well, I have, like, I've actually put this one to rest. Um, great game. Honestly, I love it. But anyways, that is all the time I have for right now. I hope you guys enjoyed that. This was a very awesome indie game. Very good story. The All the visuals and everything just pretty awesome. Uh, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.